The first day back carving, getting set up, I actually snapped this plug in and broke it. You can see right here, I just broke it. So I didn't have power for the first day. It was a little bit tricky to get set up. Um, there's the raw st stone getting it into place. And it's, it was actually bigger than I thought it would be. Here I'm just checking to see if I could see any cracks in the stone and just get an idea of how I'm gonna place this bear. I knew that towards the tapered side, I would probably be putting the head, but I just wanted to check to see if there was any cracks in the stone. And that's why I actually sand the piece first to see if where I'm placing the head or any of the key features, there's gonna be any cracks because you kind of want to avoid those. Um, so now I'm starting to sort of draw in the piece and get an idea. Initially, I thought the head was gonna be up and as you can see here, struggling with the power again. What's going on? Oh boy, let's try this. No, okay, so day's over. <laughs> Next day back, um, getting started drawing in the face and you'll notice I actually draw in the face a lot because I draw it in and carve it out um, but it's always fun doing those first cuts usually I do the line here where the ears are where the tip of the nose is and right in the center on the eyebrows and those three lines um, there's two there now but you'll see I'll do three lines kind of getting the right distance um, I use this blade because there's not a lot of friction and you don't want any friction when you're carving because you don't want to break your stone. So then I cut off that level. So I'm going to be sort of doing the bear with the head up. That was the plan. So you can see I'm, I'm establishing the angle right now, drawing that face back in and there's the eyebrows and carving away now a lot of the excess stone that I'm not going to be using. And now going ahead and so I do this too throughout the carving. I'll draw in and then I'll cut off what I've drawn and then redraw it and kind of draw and carve and draw and carve as I go throughout the process. I don't typically work for models. I just jump right in and kind of carve. Now I had a little fault in the stone. So I ended up cutting the piece actually quite flat and changing my design after that first day. And now I'm going to be doing the head down I decided and this is that angle that I really that I talked about in the beginning of my video here that I really loved and so that angle was actually established right then and there and there I am drawing in the face again getting the angles measuring it out I use my hands a lot for measuring and gotta love those drawing skills learning how to draw from a reference for many years really helps me in my carving process Okay, now we're starting to get into it. It's starting to get real now, folks. I'm carving out the nose. This is always an exciting time because I feel like I can really start getting into the piece now. And sometimes I, I resist kind of moving forward in the piece and you just have to jump in and you, you have to start making those, those major cuts. But I always leave myself a little bit of room. Like I, those first initial cuts on the nose were actually thicker than I needed them to be because then I'll slowly work away with my file and work it down to the size I want. Um, so I'm just sort of establishing some of the relationships, the measurements of the face. And as I've mentioned before, you know, I, I spend just as much time on the face as I do on the rest of the piece. You can see I've lifted up the stone here and that helps me because what I find I naturally try and straighten out the piece. Like it's, I don't know what it is. It's like a natural thing with the body. Your internal measuring system just naturally tries to straighten it out. So what I do if I want to tilt on the head is I actually raise the stone, raise the front of the stone and carve it straight. And then when I put the stone back down, there's a tilt. So that's one of the techniques that I do. Um, establishing where the, uh, the hump is going to be on the back and getting the angle of the back. And there's a few key angles here that are important um, when you're carving to get sort of that, uh, that feel of a, of a bear kind of in the, in the gravity of it and the weight of it. Um, yeah, I got my references there. I actually got that little mechanism just like off of Amazon that holds my phone and that's been an awesome addition to my carving studio. After a few days, the sun started coming out. I'm happy about that. It's still a little cold in the studio. Gotta have my hot coffee with me. Um, here we go, cutting off a lot of that excess stone, getting into where the feet are gonna sit. 
and um, what am I doing here? Lifting this up. It's good to get a little bit of height so you're so it's easier to work with the stone. I find myself crawling around a lot on the ground <laughs> trying to get underneath the thing, but um, you know, it's a physical process carving stone. It's like a there's a there's a definitely a physical labor element to it. Um, yeah, just working on now getting the feet in place. And I kind of do that. I start with the head and I work back into the piece, work down into the legs. Got a little bit of snow one of the days, um, kind of winter showing itself a little bit, but you know, I've dressed warm enough and it honestly was a really mild winter and we've had a really mild winter um, until recently. So it wasn't too bad of working in the studio. Um, got one of my carving attachments going and just kind of refining around the face. And here we go with those hand files and my little Dremel and I really go to work with those two uh, tools to really get that face and get those details. And it's great because I can really slow down uh, during that time and, and I really like to do that. Just like slow down, focus on the details, don't rush yourself. And stone carving, it takes a long time and that's part of it. You sort of have to just be patient. Um, you can see I kind of mapped out where the feet are going to be sitting. I kind of wanted the front paws turned in and the back ones turned out a little bit. Thought it would make it like a little interesting point. More rain, but you know what? It's nice out. My carving studio is out sort of in the country, so I love it. I love hearing the crows. You know, it makes me feel like I'm close to nature as I'm carving nature, right? Time to get in underneath the piece, flip it over and get those feet kind of starting to carve out underneath. It's important not to ever rush any part of this process and often you lose your tools so you got to keep track of where your tools are because <laughs> that dust you know the layers of dust just happen like quickly a little bit of snow and back in the studio for another day get my phone set up get my google photos i got about 200 300 bear photos on there um, and I kind of use like a collection of specific ones for each uh, each piece I do. Love my coffee, got my hot coffee. Gets me through the day. All right, what are we doing? Now I'm checking like, I arrive at the studio and I'm checking, what am I gonna work on today, right? And I check all the angles and I just see what jumps out. Like where where should I start today? Sometimes I know, sometimes I have to sort of do this process where I'm testing, I'm looking. What needs to be the next step? And here, I think I've got it. You know what? I think I need to work on the feet. Getting the feet, taking out a little bit of stone from underneath the feet. So that's what I, that's what I started on in this day. And I probably will jump right back to the head because usually in the morning, I like to work on um, the details in the head. That's where I'm my freshest. But first I gotta do a little bench clean, get all that dust out of there. I have to do this throughout the whole carving process because I'm making a ton of dust. More rain. And this is another thing. One of my most useful tools in my carving studio is this kitchen sieve because I can put my tools in there because I'm right now I'm looking for a specific carving tool that I've sort of lost amongst all my other ones. So I got to clean out the dust and it just helps me see my tools. And there it is. My die grinder, I've had this die grinder for like five years. It's been a Makita die grinder. I think it was about $400, but it was so worth it. It's been an absolute workhorse for me. I use it on every single piece. And um, here I go now. And this is where it gets really fun, where I'm really just, moving and forming the face and it really starts to come to life when I'm doing these details. It's one of my favorite parts of the carving process, but honestly, I love all parts of it. It, it seems to sort of come to life throughout every single process, every single part of the process. Sometimes some of those first cuts, suddenly a bear jumps out and you're like, wow. And I actually will sharpen my fine point uh, Dremel bits into a finer point and I don't even have the Dremel on here. I'm actually just using a fine needle point and I'm scratching in kind of where I'm putting the eyes because soapstone is so soft, you can actually scratch away um, the stone. 
This is the Squamish River that I drive over every single day going to work and eagles are always perched along this river. But it's just such a beautiful scene, a beautiful area where I live. So grateful to be living in this area. And there was actually a few grizzly bear sightings in Squamish this year, which is the first I've heard of it. Um, so I'm getting into the final days here. I think this is like, I got a day or two left and you can see that everything's starting to come together. I'm starting to really refine that face. Face is usually the first thing that I fully finish. And you can see it's coming to life and not quite done that nose yet or those ears are a little big still, but slowly working on it. And there we go, slowly, that's the key word. It will come together. You just gotta be patient. And I mean, it does move quickly, but there's sort of a close up, got the face done. Now getting the, getting the, uh, the feet kind of lined up. And now I think this is my last day carving, beautiful day. Last day into the studio, it's always exciting doing the, you know, showing up when you've done the face, it looks good, and now you just gotta kinda bring it home. So it was a beautiful sunny day. Got my piece of marble there that I still haven't carved. Um, getting set up here. Very repetitive, you know, carving is repetitive. You gotta show up and you gotta, you gotta do the work. Do a little quick, uh, quick shovel just to, you know, clean some of the dust out of the studio and out of the mind and kind of clean things up. And now let's get into carving the details of the claws and the feet. You know, the feet are actually quite tricky. There's, they've got an interesting structure to them. And so I really, you know, you really want to get the angle, the angles and the details and really focus in on the bare feet and see how they really, really work. Um, there's a couple of dogs that live on the yard where, where I'm renting my studio space and, uh, they like to come over and visit every once in a while and say hello. They're big dogs and they sort of keep the bears away. <laughs> Sanding process now and you can actually see here as the stone gets sanded you can see the color. It actually gets darker but that's the color like starting to come through. So if I were to get that wet now you would see the color. And um, so I go through three or four different layers of sanding. Honestly soapstone is very easy to sand because it is soapstone. It's softer. So that, that makes the process a little nicer. You can actually shape the carving too. And then I get in with my die grinder and I'm actually sanding underneath there. But there it is, ready to be, ready to be oiled and finished. Um, add a little bit of texture into the, the neck there, um, which was a nice feature, I thought it worked. And then of course you gotta sign it, 2021. Sign it before I get, uh, get it on this bench here to do the oiling. This is my tongue oil. I've been using this for a long time and I find it just works like it just works good. So I've just keep using it. Um, but I also have tested now this other uh, technique to finish it where I've applied the tongue oil, but I've also uh, am applying some other uh, compounds to it to really bring out the shine and protect it and give it a layer of protection because soapstone is a little bit soft too. So there it is, looks quite beautiful. Um, it's got that nice warm yellow color on the side. It's always a nice sense of accomplishment actually when I finish a piece, I always feel like, okay, cool. Got one down, that feels great. And then, um, yeah, on to the next one. All right, thank you everybody for joining me uh, for this video. Time to clean the studio and get ready for another one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to hearing from you guys. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, thanks for watching.